this tutorial, we're going to render the car that we've been modeling in the Lego scene in Maya and put it into a Photoshop file like this. This tutorial is aimed at my primary school age students in my Saturday class. And so I'm going to keep it very simple. You'll first want to make sure that your final model is all on its own and that all of the other bits of Lego have been pushed out of the way. So you can select everything else and do W on the keyboard and move all the other bits and bobs out of the way. I usually put my main object in the grid. Now we're going to want to render two versions of our Lego scene. One with just the object on its own and with a transparent background like this and another image that includes the shadows as well. Both of these renders need to be from the exact same camera angle. So we're going to tell Maya that we want to save a specific camera view. We could create a camera, but I'm gonna keep it simple and use a perspective view. So if you angle your camera up to a nice shot like this, and when you're ready, click on your camera button up here. So this is the select camera button up here, click on that. And then on the keyboard, hit the letter S. That's S for set keyframe. When you do that, you'll see a red line appear somewhere in your time slider at the bottom of Maya. Mine's come up at frame zero because that's where my time slider was. Now, if I move my camera around like this and go somewhere else, and I move my mouse down here and drag my time slider left or right, the camera will snap back to its original position that we set earlier, which is really useful. Now we're ready to start to render. First of all, we need to change the color of the floor so that it's pure white. To do that, we need to go to our channel box layer editor with the vertical text on the right or this icon up here. Then near the bottom, you'll see that I've previously set up a layer called background in this Lego scene. At the moment, it's set to R for reference, which means we can't click on the geometry for the floor. So I'm going to click on the R so that it goes away and that this so this box becomes empty. I can now click on the floor like this. And I want to change the color of the floor. So I'll go to my attributes editor on the right hand side. And in here, I'll make sure I'm in the tab called floor. One of these options is called color. At the moment, it's a darker color. I'll drag this slider all the way to the right until it's pure white. Now we can see how this looks in our render. Sometimes rendering causes the computer to crash. So now's a good time to save your work. You can click on this icon up here, or you can hit Command S on the keyboard. To render this in real time, or to see what it, preview what it will look like, you can go to where it says Arnold up here and go to render. It will bring up a separate win render window like this. As you move your camera around in your viewport, you'll see this render window also will update. If you feel that your image is too light or too dark, you can zoom out and click on the sky sphere around the edge of your geometry and check the intensity of the image. If it, you can increase the intensity above one if you need to make your image brighter. Uh, it may look too bright in your viewport over here but it will look better over here in your final render. I'm setting my intensity to go all the way up to two. If you don't have an image for your sky dome when you click on the sky you can quickly click on the checkerboard by color and choose the file option and then click on this folder here and then choose an image. Next we need to tell my how big to make the final render. To do that we're going to go to our render settings up here which is looks like a clapperboard with a cog on it. Click on that and in the common tab over here, you'll see if you scroll down, there'll be a section called image size. If you go to presets, choose the presets for HD 1080 or you can type in 1920 by 1080 here. So width 1920, height 1080. As you do that, you'll see your final render get much larger like this. We're now ready to do the final render. I am just gonna check my Arnold renderer tab here and you can see that my quality settings are set to three for camera and all the other options are set to two. I can now close my render settings window. I'm also going to close my render view here of the car and to render the final image, I'll go up to the clapperboard up here that's empty and where it says render the current frame and click on that. This will bring up a window that will be blue to start with and as it renders you'll see little squares appear showing the car. This may take between 5 to 10 minutes so you might want to do something else while this is rendering. 
When your render is finished, you need to save it as a JPEG file. So you can go to File inside the render view, not to be confused with the file up at the top of Maya, and then go to so it's File, Save Image, and choose the option on the right hand side for Color Managed Image. Otherwise, it will be way too dark. And where it says File Type, choose a JPEG, and then you can save it onto your desktop or you can save it into the Maya Images folder as I'm doing here. Give it a name. If you're one of my students in my Saturday class, please put your name on this image here and then hit save. Also, you may want to say that this is the white background version. So I've typed in white BG and then you can hit save. Now I'm going to render another version of this image without the background. To do that, I'll close this image down with the cross at the top right and I'll go back into Maya and I'll click on the floor and I'll hit H on the keyboard for hide. That's H for hide. The floor will then disappear underneath the car. You may then see the background behind the car. If I bring up my Arnold render window just to show you what it currently looks like, you can see there's now no longer a shadow, but you can see the HDRI sphere that's casting the light. And I don't want that. I want this background to be transparent. So to make this background transparent, I will click on the sky sphere in a distance. If you cannot click on it, check in your layers that the background layer is set here to empty. So it says V and then P and then empty. And then back in your attribute editor, click in your sky dome and find the tab that says AI sky dome light shape. When you're in there, you can scroll down a bit until you get to the visibility section. One of the options will be called camera. Drag that slider all the way to zero and you'll see in your render that the background now becomes black. This means it's going to be transparent when we save this as a PNG. So we can now close down the small render view here and bring up the final render view. The main difference between these two render options is the Arnold one gives you a real time render, but it's difficult to see when it's fully finished um, on a Mac anyway. And then this one here just does a final render. So click on this render button here. The car will render again. Now, when this render is done, you again need to go to file, save image. This is the file just here and then save image. Make sure it's a color managed image. This time where it says file type, instead of a JPEG, we're going to use a PNG file, which is a simple file that saves images with transparent backgrounds so that the area around the car will be see through. I'm just going to name this Lego car transparent background and then hit save. I'm now going to close that down and we can now go to Photoshop and open up the Lego box template file. Once you've opened this up, you can go to your layers on the right hand side and you can delete the layers for the shadow for my example car and the layer that says example car as well. After that, you can import your own images. To get to these images, you'll need to go to your computer, then into documents, Maya, projects, default, and then into images. And so I'm going to drag both images into Photoshop at the same time so that they are dropped in at the same size. So I'll select both of them by drag selecting both of them in my finder and drag them into Photoshop like this. And then you have to hit enter on the keyboard for the first image and then enter on the keyboard again for the second image. You can see in your layers that both cars have come in. Now you need to make sure that these cars are in the right height in your layers here so that they're underneath all of the text and things like that. So you can hold shift and select both of your car layers or whatever you've rendered. And if they were at the top, for example, you just need to drag them down so that it says underneath the layer that says put your picture below this layer. So just drag them underneath there. To make this white background see through, you can click on the layer that says with the white background and where it says normal, change it to multiply. This will keep the car's shadow, but get rid of the white background around the edge. You can see that there's a darker area on the top and you can remove that with the eraser brush. So I'm just going to zoom in with alt and scroll. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard or click on the eraser tool here. Choose a brush up from up here and I'm going to choose a brush that's about 600 pixels in size and the hardness set to zero. And I'll then go to make sure I've clicked on my layer that says white background. You can click on the 
layer and it will come up with a message saying that this object needs to be rasterized. Just hit OK. And then you can click again and rub out the dark area at the top. And if you see any lines on the sides, you can rub those out as well. Be careful not to rub out the shadow. If you do, hit Command Z or Control Z. Now you're going to want to scale your render up to fit the image. To do that, hold Shift and select both of your layers over here for what you've rendered from Maya. And then you can resize them at the same time with these boxes around the edge. If you can't see the dots around the edge of your images, make sure that you go to Show Transform Controls at the top of Photoshop, which allows you to see these dots. If you think that your render looks a little bit washed out or pale, you can go to your top layer. So I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard to confirm the resize. And I'm just going to click on the top layer on its own. I'm then going to go to image adjustments and then to hue saturation or control or command U on the keyboard. And you can drag the saturation up like this. You can also use curves to make it a, to give it more contrast as well by going to image adjustments, curves, or Command M or Control M. And this is a great way of making your render either brighter or darker, depending on if you feel it's too bright or too dark. This seems to be about right. I might just make it a bit darker like that. When you're done, you can use the text tool from the left over here and then carefully drag select the bits of text that you'd like to change. And when you're done, you can save your Photoshop file. You can go File save as and it would be great if you could save this both as a photoshop file with your name on and as a jpeg with your name on and then upload to the google drive area that's probably being shown on the board right now and now you've completed a whole project using maya